I'm going to do something like um, div has no. I have to div has I have to put the selector I'm looking for, and in this case, the selector I'm looking for is um, something unique. So I'm looking for this. What it's going to do is it's going to look for any div, and I want it to find a div that has a label. So div has a label. So next thing, I want to look for a label that has um, that contains first name in it. And you can see how that is written here. Contains uh, that's the column contains the text you're looking for surrounded by single quotes. Now this um, dollar sign bracket and double quotes are taken care of by Power Automate Desktop. You don't need to do that. So like I said, a div that has a label and the label that contains now the quote I'm looking for in this case is um, that contains the code, the text first name. So we close the brackets. Now, after it does that, this is just going to point to this label. It's not going to point to the um, input field. If we test this, um, see, it's going to find it's going to like select the whole screen because it's a div. The whole screen is essentially a div that has a label that contains the first name. I have to tell the bot to find the input field exactly. And the way to do that is the parent child. So now this is a parent. It has a child. It has a direct child, which is the input field that I'm looking for. So I'm going to do this. Input. So it should find any input that is a child of a div that has a label that contains first name. And if we do this now, it should point us directly to that. See? So essentially, this is a custom UI selector that would find it upon, that will find the first name regardless of if it changes. I'm going to be showing how I create custom selectors using jQuery in Power Automate Desktop. So this video is just going to focus on um, creating custom selectors. I won't be showing how to automate this website, the RPA challenge. I'm just going to be focusing on the jQuery selectors. Okay, um, the first thing to know about this website is upon every submit or reload, the positioning of the input field changes. And um, because of that, selecting the UI element on the web page um, for population has to be done in such a way that it's dynamic enough to find the input fields regardless of its changing. This is a quick example of what I'm talking about now. You can see here I selected the phone number and this is what Power Automate Desktop could find. And um, you can see input text x s s g three f and um let's save this now the reason why it got this particular text or string of characters is because of something in the website now if we inspect this ui element you see this now this is the id attribute it got um, SSG3F, which is the same thing here. Now, um, let's test this. Now, it finds the phone number quite all right. But if we submit, now it has changed. If we try the selectors again, it should not find it because it has changed. The ID has changed. And I will show you what it has changed to. Now it failed. Um, so let's inspect this also. Now it has changed to M0QFH. This is the new ID. Now um, this. This is used to simulate dynamic websites, or rather, it's used to show how to build a selector correctly. In the case where there's an update to a website, that way we won't have to worry about the bots we are building failing. The way 
how automate desktop works is it builds selectors using the jQuery syntax as seen here. And in order for us to build a custom selector, something that would be dynamic enough to still find the elements that we're looking for, whether it reloads or not, we'll have to follow a similar syntax to this. Now, um, there are three steps I follow whenever I'm building a custom selector. The first one is to know what I'm looking for. Now, let me start with the first name. Um, if I spy the first name element here, it shows this. It's an input field. It has a label of first name. It is enclosed in a div, which is further enclosed in an RPA1 field, which is further enclosed in a div. And like that, like that, they are all, these are all children of different elements down to the main page of the website. So the next step I, the next step I, so the next step I take is to find what is unique to this particular field. Now, if I check here, the label has first name so this is actually what i'm looking for i'm looking for the input field that will take in the first name characters or rather the first name string so that's the second step first i find i know what i'm looking for second i find what's unique to that particular field third i find the third i find the attributes that point to that particular field i'm looking for now in order for me to do this like i said this is an input field that's enclosed in a label that has a div that has this and that's up to the very top. So if you see how, so if you see how the selector is built, we can do something very, very similar. But before we do that, we first need to know how jQuery is written. Now, this is the W3 Schools website, and you can find the documentation for jQuery here. However, the section we are interested in is this section, jQuery selectors. And if you go through it, there are a lot of um, likely functions, or there are a lot of selectors and examples that show what they all select. But um, I've only made use extensively of like just six of them. I've not really seen, or rather, I've not had the chance to really use the rest because I've not really needed to use them. And the six I've made use of is um, contains, has, and um, this parent, parent to child, parent descendant, element plus next, elements and siblings. So these are the six um, selectors I've made use of extensively and that's what we're going to be using here um so the way the way it's written is you find the parent or child of what you're looking for then you find the unique attributes it has using the contains and the has selector and um to show you i'm going to move back to this page Okay, this should work. Now I'm looking for the first name here. Yeah. So I'm looking for the first name, and this is the selectors that points to it. So I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to do something um that looks like this. First of all, this is an input. This is a label that has a first name, and this is the div that encloses it. So if I just um follow what is found here, something similar to um something similar to this parent child has contains so i'm going to do something like um div has no i have to div has i have to put the selector i'm looking for and in this case the selector i'm looking for is um something unique so i'm looking for this that what is going to do is it's going to look for any div and i want you to find a div that has a label so div has a label so next thing, I want to look for a label that has um, that contains first name in it. 
And you can see how that is written here. Contains, uh, that's the column, contains the text you're looking for surrounded by single quotes. Now this um, dollar sign bracket and double quotes are taken care of by Power Automate Desktop. You don't need to do that. So like I said, a div that has a label and the label that contains, now the quote I'm looking for in this case is, um, that contains the code, the text first name. So we close the brackets. Now, after it does that, this is just going to point to this label. It's not going to point to the um, input field. If we test this, um, see, it's going to find, it's going to like select the whole screen because it's a div. The whole screen is essentially a div that has a label that contains the first name. I have to tell the bot to find the input field exactly. And the way to do that is the parent child. So now this is a parent. It has a child. It has a direct child, which is the input field that I'm looking for. So I'm going to do this. Input. So it should find any input that is a child of a div that has a label that contains first name. And if we do this now, it should point us directly to that, see? So essentially this is a custom UI selector that would find it upon, that will find the first name regardless of if it changes. We've changed the website, the location of the first name. Let's test it again. And it found the first name. Let's do it a third time. Yeah, so it has found the first name. Now let's save this. It's always um, good practice to rename your selectors. That way, at a glance, you can easily know what it does. So it's an input and it can collect um, the first name information. So let me add another UI element just to further um, show what I'm talking about. Okay, um, I've gotten for first name. Let me get for address. Okay, um, it duplicated it and just delete this and need one of it. So same thing. So same thing as before, I'm looking for address. So same thing as before, I'm looking for an input field that will contain, that will uh, collect the address information. It is a sibling to a label that has um, that it's a sibling to a label that has that contains address, which is enclosed in the div. So um, we do the same thing as we did for the first name selector. So we say div has a label that contains address. We close it. Then we say impute. Now let's close this and um, test. We select the browser, RPA challenge, and voila, it finds the address. If we reload the page so that the position of the address changes, it will still find it. So um, this is a very basic um, knowledge on how to find UI elements in a dynamic website. Or um, if you want to build or create selectors in a website that would be dynamic enough um, to find the elements in case the website is updated, this is the best approach to follow. And with this also, we could add um, we could add variables into this, but I won't be going into that in this video. I'll just be showing how to create um, custom selectors. So let me just quickly create custom selectors for all the input fields and we'll test it as a whole.
Okay, now um, for the submit button, it's going to follow something very, very similar. Now, this is the custom, this is the selector um, Power Automate found for the submit button, and I'm quite um, pleased with it. I just have to change a few things. Um, just do this. I'm okay with um, this being as it is. Because it still finds it, it's more or less straight to the point. So I'll just leave this as it is and um, save. Um, let me rename this. Now, since this is an imp, this is a um, button and not an input, I'll rename it accordingly. Okay. So these are all the selectors I need. So um, this is basically what we're going to be testing with. So it's attached to the edge um, tab that contains the RPA challenge URL, populates all the input fields with um, tests, with dummy variables, with dummy characters, and um, click the submit link. So at the end, what we are hoping to see is this field being clicked and being these fields being populated and the submit button being pressed. So I'm just going to put a breakpoint here, and let's run it and see everything looks all right. Okay, so you can see it worked um, correctly. Test company name, test email, test F name, test ruler company, L name, phone number. An address now. Let's hit um, submit. It has changed. Let's run it again and see. Okay, so still worked exactly as we wanted it to. So yeah, that's it. That's basically how to create custom jQuery selectors for Power Automate Desktop. I hope it helps in your journey. It took me quite a while to get this right, but I've been using it ever since and it's been working quite well for me. Thank you.